everyone. Today we got to play Rajas of the Ganges. So, um, but this is the roll and write version, right? So it's, there's it's two the Dice Charmers. Dice Charmers. Ooh. So before we get into it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because board games are amazing and that is what we do here. All right. So Randy, tell us about this version of the Ganges. So Rise of the Ganges, the Dice Charmers, was a 2020 release. It had a Board Game Geek rating of 7.6 currently and a Board Game Geek rank of 11.88. It took us two years to play this game? I, no, I got it for Christmas. Oh, okay, cool. So it took us two years to purchase the game. What a shame. Uh, actually, probably I wasn't out for the full two years, but some, some span of time between 2020 <laughs> and 2021, we got this game. Uh, it's got a, uh, again, a board game geek rank of 1188, uh, two to five player game, uh, average length of 30 to 45 minutes. And that's about right. Age 12 and up, possibly, I mean, the iconography in it, but it's not Maybe. really that advanced of a game. Um, so what's the price point for this one? Uh, it, well, it depends on where you go. The MSRP is 21.99. If you go to Amazon, they're selling it for the cheap price of twenty three seventy four, so they're hey, you know. up the price over MSRP. Uh, Cardass has it for nineteen ninety nine. Miniature Market eighteen ninety nine. So sounds like of the places that I checked, Miniature Market's got the cheapest. Um, it uh, is designed by Inca Brand and Marcus Brand. Their names have come up a few times in the games we've played. <laughs> uh, art by Dennis Lohausen, and it was published by Hutch and R and R Games. So. That's all the info I have. Cool beans. All right, so now let's dig into it. Let's talk about quality of pieces. So it's a roll and write. You get paper. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, the table is about as empty as we've ever had the table for one of our reviews. So it doesn't take up much space. You can No, so that's actually space. that's actually a good thing if you're yeah. trying this is a great travel game. Um, so you get paper. Yeah. Uh, you get cardboard. The, this I don't know why. It's just for placing your dice. Oh, in case you have two. Well, um, yeah, when you're playing a three or f three to five player game, you're going to play it with one die on the side, and if you're playing two player, you flip it over and you place two dice on. Oh, yeah. Um, now I will say the elephant's cool just because the elephant's cool. Well, the elephant is cool. The problem is, is the box is not big enough to hold the elephant once you've assembled it, which really? means every time you put it back in the box, you have to take the elephant apart. So the elephant is not going to last. He's going to wear out. Blows. Yeah. Poor elephant. His lifespan will not be the hundred years that elephants typically live. Um, and then you have dice. Obviously they are custom dice to fit uh, this particular game. Um, overall, I think the quality is fine. It's nothing, it, you know, it's okay. It's good. Yeah. Um, all right. So giving it a score wise, I like the elephant. And for a roller ride, I think it was, it's all right. I mean, it's I'll, good. I'll, the fact that they give you two pads with two different patterns was nice. That's true. And they I are like double sided. Mm -hmm. So you won't run out super fast, but their pads are thin because obviously you got two pads in the width of this yeah. box. So they're not going to last for very, forever, but uh, while you have them, they're not bad. And you can make copies of them, I guess, but they'll be black and white and won't be as functional probably. Yeah. Um, Unless you have a color printer that does color copies, and of course, then you can make color copies, and then those will probably be fine. Yeah. So, overall, give it a score. What are you thinking? Um, I'll probably, I mean, there's not a lot to score in it, but I'll probably go ahead and give it a six. I mean, there's nothing bad about it. There's just nothing outstanding. I'll give it a six and a half. The half point is for the elephant, because I really like elephants. Yeah. So, take that word for it, you will. Um, all right, so now let's then talk about theme. So this theme is mirroring off the original game, yep. and I love the art for this. I love this aesthetic. I think it's fantastic. Um, the icons are a little droopy. It's not as good as the artwork in the original no, game. No, no, but I, I mean, it's a pad of paper. It's not really required. No, You're it's not meant play to play it be... and throw it away. I know. So, it, I mean, it's fine. There's nothing outstanding about the art. Um, what is pretty interesting... The box art's free. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's interesting is how they took uh, the board game and managed to make a roll and write that had the same feel as what happens in the board game. Yes. 
I will say if I hadn't played the original, the theme wouldn't be as strong because yeah. I'm taking it over yeah. from that original from that original game. And you find a couple that are like this. You have a couple of worlds of games, and I think that they did well in translating yeah. that to a roll and write, and I think they did very well there. Yeah, but like if you take this compared to like uh, the Imperial Settlers roll and write. It it doesn't really feel like no, Imperial it Settlers. It's got the little uh, little guys and everything on it, but there's nothing that gives you the same gameplay feel in yeah. that. Whereas this actually feels like you're doing the yeah. same things. It, you it felt like, like I, oh, yeah, game. look, I, I only have like a little bit of time. Oh, I'm gonna pull this out because I wanted to yeah. play this game. No, I agree with you on that one. So if we think about scores for theme, what would you give the score wise? Well, given that I think it's integrated into the gameplay, which is what you know, I'm trying to say, is I think the theme is integrated into the gameplay here. I'm probably going to go ahead and give this a seven. I don't think it's an outstandingly you know heavy theme, but I think it is well imbalanced into the game. Um, I will also give you a seven. Um, the a seven or the game? Well, I'll give you higher. I married you. <laughs> okay. Um, but I give the I, I agree with you on the seven. Um, but I feel like most of the theme was a carryover from. Yeah. The other game. Um, but other than that, I did think they achieved what they set out to do, was to make a roll and write version of the main game. Mm -hmm. um, and I still like the other thing. Yeah. It is a cool thematic piece. All right. Um, now, let's then talk about the rule book. So All how right. did, was it was it easy to read for you? or what Yeah, I mean, it, it's... The, the book is 48 pages, but that's because it's in tons of different languages in it. Uh, you know, German being the first one, then English, then you've got uh, uh, French, uh, I don't know what other languages are in here. Uh, there's a, just a bunch of languages. It looks like four different languages. Um, and then the actual like rules for it are about 12 pages long, but it's a small book. It's not a large book at all. Uh, and, you know, if you've played Roger the Ganges, it's going to be very familiar with you. Yeah, you'll be able as, to transpose some of those rules yeah, pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, the, the font is really small because the book is really small. So that's the only thing is if you've got an eyesight issue. Just, yeah, because I'm reading it from here and I can't read it. Yeah, it is it is tiny. Uh, but the gameplay is very simple and it. It explains it well. Did it break it out? And I see that it's got color yeah, it's boxes. It's got color coded based on the, the colors of the dice. So the green oh, is the so green die helpful. explanation, blue is the blue die explanation. Yeah, it's very nicely done. So they had a good organization yeah. pattern for it. Uh, and then, you know, it's talking about the iconography. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, everything you would expect to see and how the bonuses work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a well done rule book for being, you know, the, the, the fact is, is if your language is easy to find in here, it's great. Well, the rulebook's designed with German first. Obviously, that's, you know, a lot of these games are designed for Germany. And then you've got English second, and then these other languages, French, and I'm not sure if it's Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's, good that, it, it's good that it can be um, cross-language barriers. Because yeah. sometimes you don't get that, especially when explanations... So, or just in one language. But, yeah, that's, I mean, it's it's labeled with the flag, so it's real simple to find your section, whatever's appropriate for yeah, you. Yeah, so what would you give a score-wise, then? Uh, I'll give it an 8. I mean, it's pretty well done, and I like the color coding yeah. matching the dice. It's just the font is really small. All right, so now let's move on to actual gameplay. So the gameplay is, um, you start off with a blank page, ha, ha, ha. And we'll start with and the everybody, day. And everybody has to start with the same. Yeah. You can't do one person day, one person night. Okay, so I'm going to roll these dice. And then um, the person who rolls, so first player does rotate, so just FYI. But I'm going to choose one die that I would like. So in this particular instance, I think I'm going to go with this lovely lady, which lets me go up on the C track one. So that's helpful to me. All right. Oh, no, wrong place. I put it here. Now, because I'm first player, whatever I put, whatever of the same color that I didn't choose, I'm actually going to put up here, right? And then I'm going to pass the dice. Now, there's something special about this die. And Randy, you don't like your, your choices, do you? Well, I guess I'm being told I don't, <laughs> so apparently not. So, uh, so to fix that, so, you're going to choose to... Well, you have in the game of uh, Raja's of Ganges, the, the, the standard game, you've got karma that you can spend that lets you alter the dice. Mm -hmm. In this, you can use it to alter the dice as well. You can take and use the karma 
to take the die that's in play up here along with one of the dice up here that might be your second choice and re-roll both of those dice that you have to choose one of the results set that come up. Now you can spend more karma to roll them again until you get a face that you would prefer on it. But you ultimately have to choose between the dice. And just like you know, in the board game of this, the different things you can do it, you can go down the river, that's the blue dice. Uh, in this you can connect your cities, which is also something you can do in the board game by using roads, that's mm -hmm. the green dice. You can collect goods, which is, there's trade goods in the board game, so that's the same trade goods that are depicted here. And then you have cool specialty people, yep. so these people all have special abilities that you can choose to do. Um, so that I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I like the scoring mechanism. This is one of the reasons why I like the original game, and I like this game too, is because you have coins and victory points that upon meeting, that is when the game ends if one player meets or... or they have to intersect. Intersect. Um, so I, I really, I like that mechanism, and I'm so glad they were able to bring that to the game, and they've got enough going on to be able to manage that. So I was very excited to see that. Um, I think they did... I think they did that very, very yeah. well. I mean, that's the most... I don't like the fact that you keep winning, though. No, I only won once. Your brother won the first time. You still beat me. Yeah, I won the second time. I tied you the first time. Well, that's true. I, I'm literally mentally scarred with how much he beat me the second time around because it was atrocious, guys. I did kind of thump you and your dad. I know. I, I didn't uh, even know what I did wrong. I really didn't. I was like, I thought I was doing okay, but obviously I was not. Uh, so... What's, the, the scoring has been the, the most interesting and the most memorable aspect of Roger the Ganges to begin with. So, you know, the fact that you have the, that conveyed into this game really brings it, you know, makes it feel like you're playing Raj, a small box of Rajas. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, therefore it doesn't feel like a small box. And the strategy's there. And, it, and uh, as far as, you know, the, the, the design of this, I've always liked that design with the coin because you can go, you can, even though it's a very simplistic design. Yeah. So the thing that difference is, is you don't spend coin in this where in the old yeah. one you, you could. Yes. You could use your coin. Because coin this. was also a, uh, resource, but yeah. that's not the case with this one. And I kind of missed that component, but it's yeah. still fine. And, and just like in Raj's, you get bonuses as you go down the coin track or the victory point track, depending on which one you're playing. Because mm -hmm. the daytime one, you get bonuses as you go down the coin track. On the nighttime one, it's a different, it's the same gameplay, but it, it's things are distributed differently on the board. And well, yeah, you get different special, yeah. you get special stuff. Yeah, like and, and the bonuses are now on the, on the victory points instead of on the coin. So the, the, they just changed, you know, everything. Well, but about that kind of leads you to do a little bit different strategy, yeah. right? You want to go more for the victory points than you do the yeah. coins. And so I think that's very beneficial. Yeah. And the other thing is they took away, they made, I think the nighttime one's a little harder because they took away one of your karma that you could possibly accumulate. Correct. And, and they reduced some of the bonuses you get. So, yeah, I think all in all, I mean, it's, it's a nice that they have the two varieties in this game. So it gives you a little more replayability. And honestly, you know, when I look at all the roll and rights we play and all of them out there, because we play a lot of them. Yeah, because um, we like them, I, yeah. or at least I do. Yeah, so. So, and I'm, when I say roll and rights, I'm including flipping rights and all the varieties thereof. I mean, yeah. we've got the Welcome To, which has got cards. You got, you know, lots of different. I, I honestly think this is probably my favorite, except for yeah. Hadrian's Wall. That's what I say. This is my second favorite of all of them. Hadrian's Wall is just by far and away the best out there. This, but this if, one's this pretty, is a good second. Yeah, this best. is a good second. And it's more portable. Yes, I agree with you. This one will be going with us on our cruise to Dice Tower. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to take this on the box because this will fit nicely in my suitcase. Whereas Hadrian's Wall would weigh my suitcase down, it would probably sink the boat. <laughs> so you know, this one is portable. Now uh, you know they may still they may already have it in the Dice Tower. You have to game like, collection, but even I don't care. I'm still taking it because okay. we can play it the day before. We got it, we're going to be down there an extra day. Yeah. So this one will be good for us playing hotel. Yeah. Uh, we've been known to do that. Yeah. <laughs> now I will say, when you play two player, you're going to flip to the other side of these, and you will get two dice out of mm -hmm. the collection. So it's you won't you'll get more dice per roll in a two player game than you will with three, four, or five. So uh, the, recommend the recommendation on Board Game Geek is this plays best two to four. I, we've been tried it with five. 
we've only played it from three player and a four player version. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, I, I still liked it. I I'm excited to play it two player with you at a later date. Um, let's talk about scoring now. So. I was really impressed with how well they translated this. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one probably a uh, nine. I agree. Nine. This is good. Like, like I said, this is the second best rolling route I can think of that I have played. I've really enjoyed this. This is something I might actually pull out. I mean, I like run rights in general, but this is a really good one. If mm -hmm. I'm feeling heavy, but I don't have time for it. Exactly. And so I mean, this is a good fit. This is not a the party type one that you would play you know like you know like welcome to is good for big groups uh and, but th it's not as high in strategy although there are other variants of welcome to that get a little more strategic yeah but this one if you're playing with people who like more advanced strategy this is a but good you're one. still short on time right this works out yeah. fantastically it's not it's not going to take as long to get out or set up or play or take down as hadrian's wall yeah so i agree with you i'm an eye on it so Thank you guys so much for joining us. I had a blast. Really, I think you should pick this one up if you, especially if you've liked Ganges before. Yeah. And it's only 20, 20 ish bucks. I mean, it's yeah, that's it's not bad at all. Guys, it's a still totally worth it. Uh, totally worth a couple of nights of enjoyment at least. Um, well, thank you guys. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.